Decades after the world's major powers reeled from the horrors of the Nazis and vowed never again, Oscar-nominated director Dror Moray shines a harsh light on that broken promise, revealing that genocide and targeted crimes against humanity would, in fact, happen again and again. Moray's powerful new film, The Corridors of Power, examines the often disappointing and complicated political calculus that goes into decisions about how the United States government, as the sole remaining superpower in the immediate post-Cold War era, has responded to reports of atrocity since the fall of the Soviet Union. The film, now playing in select theaters, is an attempt to grapple with America and the UN's ability, or inability actually, to stop genocidal crimes by focusing on six specific conflicts, from Kosovo and Kuwait to Bosnia and Rwanda, and more recently, Libya and Syria. The film combines on-the-ground footage of atrocities with introspective and raw conversations with State Department veterans and political heavyweights from several administrations over the last four decades, including Madeleine Albright, Colin Powell, and Hillary Clinton. Arriving at a pivotal time in the world, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine increasingly being described as a potential third world war, this, firm, uh, this film grapples with why some atrocities trigger U.S. action while others don't. Here's a look at the trailer. Do you want justice or peace? You can't have both. This is one of those very difficult calculations. We were not successful. Hundreds of thousands of people are being killed. How can you live with yourself? I should have insisted on getting more involved, and I didn't. Forever. I believe in peace. I'm not a pacifist. Indifference is a sin. We must do something. So the primary question is really no longer what do we know? The question is what are we going to do about it? So you didn't debate what will be the next steps after the war? You didn't debate that? No. Joining us today to discuss his powerful new film is the Oscar-nominated director, Dror Moray. Dror, uh, congratulations on the film. It took you a long time to do this. You've actually focused uh, on, on two former secretaries of state who, who are not even living. Um, you were triggered to this conversation by something that, that, that confounded all of us, and it was Syria. It was... The, the things that the Syrian regime was doing to its own people, and, and what the rest of us figured out is there's no actual mechanism for this. There's mechanisms, sometimes, for countries that invade other countries or countries that go over a border to pro persecute people, but when people do it to their own people, there's very little that the world can do. Yeah. Ali, thank you for having me in this show. I'm very happy to be here. And you're right. What, what triggered me to this movie is seeing, after Obama's red line, declaration that the, the use of chemical uh, weapon will be abhorrent and unjustifiable, and he will act upon that. And then you saw the chemical weapon attack, which was in Ghouta, and 1,500 people died, among them more than 400 kids, and nothing has been done. And that's after the red line of the president. So I asked myself, after the intervention in Libya, why did they intervene in Syria? Did they intervene in Libya, but not in Syria? And that kind of initiated the the going out for the, to doing to do this movie. What did you learn? Um, because one of the takeaways I think from the film is that national interest for Americans or for the American government is not the same thing as as human rights. The average person might think those two things are connected, but in fact they're more disconnected than we'd like to believe. You are absolutely right. National interest is where America has a real pivotal interest to intervene. So, for example, in Ukraine now, America is helping Ukraine because there is an interest there that Putin will not sweep away the democracies and will go after that. If there were no in, there were no response by America, he would probably go into NATO countries believing that he will not do that. But Putin assumed that because of what happened in Syria. When he intervened in Syria and nothing happened there, and although you know the flock of refugees went into Syria and from there from Syria to all of Europe changed basically the face of Europe, 
nothing had happened. And Putin kind of assumed probably that if he will do that in Ukraine, the same thing will happen. So the national interest of America is defined by one person, and that's the president of the United States. He is the one that defines what comes in to the national interest and what comes out of that. So for example, Rwanda, in the mid-1994, was not a national interest for America. And there, in 100 days, 900,000 people were killed right. by machetes mostly. And nobody can claim that they didn't know because the, the information of what was going on in Rwanda was available to the yes. decision maker during that time. It was, in fact, in, in many cases available to the public. Dror, you know, I know that Russia, Ukraine and Russia are not a focus of your of your documentary, but at this point, you had somebody we just played in the trailer who said you can choose justice or you can choose peace. You can't have both. Um, justice yeah. in Ukraine, for instance, would be getting their land back, including Crimea. Peace would mean the, the air raid sirens not going off on Christmas morning and more people not being killed. Is it true? Do you believe that you can't you can have justice or peace, but not both? I think sometimes you can have both, but we have to be reasonable. We have to be, I don't, for, for example, if we are speaking about what goes on in Ukraine now, I don't think at the end game can include justice and peace. I don't see Putin withdrawing all his forces from Crimea and ba basically having to admit failure, complete failure for his, his diplomacy or he, what he did. Uh, so in the case of Ukraine, I think that, that hopefully that there will be peace Justice, I don't think we will achieve in Ukraine. But there are other examples where you can see that justice and peace happen together, not more often. I have to say, you know, when I started this process of doing the movie, I was more an idealist. And I would take the title of Samantha Power's second book, The Education of an Idealist. Yeah. I, I was educated during the process of doing the movie to understand that you the world is full of bad people and sometimes justice doesn't work with peace. You you have to achieve what you wanted. And basically, this guy that spoke about it, he was speaking about what happened in, in Darfur and saying, you know, it was during the time that Omar al-Bashir was in power and justice was not available. So he said, you know, you have to work with what you have. You have to try to achieve justice and peace cannot work together sometimes. So... Huh. Well, while Putin is in power, we cannot achieve uh, justice. Maybe we can achieve peace for the Ukrainian people. All right. Well, it's not an uplifting message, but at this point, we need messages. We need to. We need critical thinking. We need to be able to look back at history and understand how decisions are made. And you've helped us helped us do that. Uh, Dora, thanks very much. Dora Moray is the filmmaker and the director of the Corridors of Power. The film is in select theaters now, and it will soon air on Showtime.